All right, welcome back to Every Day I Race for Suspension Part 2. So today I'm going to talk about the shock. This is a shock uh, from a 2007 Kawasaki ZX-10R, and it has two adjustments. It has rebound adjustment, and it has compression adjustment. If you turn the... Uh, if you turn it clockwise, the rebound will become firmer. If you turn it counterclockwise, the rebound will become softer. Same thing on the on the uh, compression. If you turn it clockwise, the compression will become firmer. If you turn it counterclockwise, the compression will become softer. So what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> let's do a small demonstration. I'm going to turn this all the way counterclockwise and I'm going to compress it. We're going to see exactly what's going to happen. So now it's fully compressed. I'm going to let it go. And the shock rebounded. Now I'm going to turn it all the way clockwise. And we're going to compress it again. And we're going to let it go. And as you can tell, it made a huge difference. Uh, it do the same thing for the uh, compression. I'm not going to do anything with it right now. So basically, uh, stock OEM shocks aren't very good. They're pretty much basic. But uh, since you're not riding a MotoGP bike, for a uh, average street rider they can do pretty good job as long as you know how to adjust them so first uh, let's talk about the uh, compression um, let me bring this up I'm gonna move the shock is out of the way So let's pretend that this is a, a motorcycle. So it's got suspension travel. It doesn't have any shocks, but you know. Okay, so if, uh, <clears throat> first we're gonna talk about compression. If your compression is too soft and you go over bump, then the wheel is gonna bounce off the rock or obstacle and it's gonna overshoot. It's gonna go over it and you're going to lose traction. So you don't want to do that. You want the suspension to go over, compress, and then come back to ground like so. So if your compression is too firm, then as you're going over bump, instead of spring, uh, getting all the, uh, taking all the energy, you're going to the whole motorcycle, the whole frame, and you're going to feel a bump, it's going to pretty much take all the shock. Like you don't have a spring in there. So you're going to go over bump, you're going to hit it, it's going to bounce off of it again, and then it's going to fly over, and you're going to have no traction. So what you want to do is uh, you want to adjust it. So when you hit the bump, first of all, the wheel doesn't continue to go over the shock, uh, what you want to do is make sure the wheel always stays in contact with the obstacle. So you hit it, uh, your suspension will compress, 
at the very top and that's what you want to do the rest of it is going to be for rebound adjustment so let's say you adjusted your compression you go over a bump and uh, gets over the bump like so the compression uh, the suspension is uh, compressed slightly then we're gonna start adjusting the rebound so the trick for a rebound is to have as soft a rebound as possible so don't get too crazy about dialing in uh, the rebound too firm because what you want to do once you're over the bump and you continue to go you want the wheel to go back and hit the ground and stay there so you constantly your tires in constant contact with the ground if the rebound is too firm and you come off the uh, the rock or obstacle whatever you want to call it the wheel is going to take some time for the tire to come into contact with the ground and you're going to lose traction if that bump is in the corner and you're making a turn then it's going to skip and it's going to go try to go too wide so that's pretty much uh what you're going to have to do for normal street riding what i do is i usually turn them all the way out into soft position and then i count uh, one, two, this shock doesn't have any clicks, three, four, five, and so, and so on. Then I'll start dialing in uh, compression. I'll go one half turn and then I'll go ride it and then I, I'll go see how it rides. Uh, if it's still goes over bumps and the tire is flying over it then I add another half a turn and I continue to do that till I'm happy with the uh, with the way my my motorcycle uh, takes care of the obstacles after that I start dialing the uh, rebound now you have to be careful on the rebound you don't want to go too much and that's basically for street riding so do the same thing always write down exactly what you're doing do one uh, change at a time so if you're doing a change to compression don't touch anything else just do half a turn and go from there once you move to a rebound just do a small change small one change you know half a turn and then go for a ride and see if you like it so next <clears throat> since i'm not going to be riding on the street with my bike uh basically my suspension setup is going to be different i'm going to be going straight and my my whole point is that my front suspension is basically uh strapped so it doesn't have any movement so the only suspension that's going to be doing most of the work is going to be rear suspension so this is a rear suspension so my front one's going to be low to the ground my back end is going to be doing all the work it's going to squat so what i want to do is that when i'm at the line and i start to accelerate i want my suspension to squat to transfer all the way to the rear tire and uh stay there so I get the best traction now I'm going to be playing uh, I'm going to be adjusting my rebound mostly because that's pretty much what my bike needs are if my rebound is not firm enough and I try to accelerate it's going to squat and then it'll try to bounce right back and I'm going to lose traction when I lose traction I lose race so I don't want to do that. So the track that I race at is very flat. So there aren't any bumps. So it's a pretty good track. The only thing I have to worry about is getting the most traction out of the hole. So I'm going to dial my rebound 
quite a bit so when I start to accelerate my bike will squat and then I'll, it'll start going and it'll stay there transferring as much weight as possible so those are those are two examples how you can dial in your shock and there are many more examples depending on what you're doing you could be going off-road you could be street riding you could be uh, doing road racing you could be drag racing every one of those are going to need different adjustments to your suspension or your shock the front suspension is pretty much the same it's got a spring in the fork and it's got two adjustments compression and rebound we're talking about stock suspension so you dial the same way the front end that you dial the back end and uh, you go ride carefully uh, try to learn what it feels like and uh, once you're comfortable with it you're good to go if you want more adjustment you're more of a hardcore racer then obviously you're gonna have to upgrade your shock but at least you'll know what you're gonna be looking at you, you're gonna know what spring you're gonna need and you're gonna know uh, what shock you're gonna need because stock shocks they have some adjustment but there's not a whole lot of adjustment so the range is here that's how much you can adjust if your needs are somewhere here or here obviously this shock isn't gonna work for you so that's when you're gonna have to upgrade so uh, that's it for now uh, thank you for watching and uh, come back for uh, next video I've got a couple of more videos I'm gonna make on the suspension uh, hopefully you guys uh, like it